Hi everyone, it's my absolute pleasure to join CPD EduChat and I am privileged to have been asked to forward a presentation all about making your school a part of your community. What I'd like to take you through today is how we've managed to do this as a school um, and hopefully give you some top tips about how you can engage with the community in your school community. The first thing you absolutely need to consider is school culture. We all know that culture in a school is imperative to the success of any school in the country. The culture of a school is arguably even more important than the academic curriculum, as when students have a positive feeling towards their school, they tend to achieve better. Maslow's theory proposes that we need certain essentials and needs to be met before we can go on to achieve more. Before anything else, physiological needs such as food, water and warmth and rest need to be met. And after that, safety needs must be met. People need to meet psychological needs such as belonging and self-esteem, and when these are fulfilled, we can all reach our potential. According to a researcher called Joe Sanfilippo and his hacking leadership philosophy, the culture of a school comes directly from leaders, and we know this makes absolute sense. Students follow the examples of leaders, so it's the responsibility of teachers and parents to use and set the tone for the students. To be most effective, this influence needs to come from the top down, but absolutely everyone is key in setting the tone for the importance of community and culture in our schools. Leaders need to be receptive to new ideas brought forth by school community members, whether that is their school council, parents, staff and community as a whole. Never ever be dismissive of what your students bring to the table, because quite often they're more creative than we could ever be. Leaders should absolutely walk the walk and encourage parents and students to participate in the school community. So let me talk you through what we did and how we actually deployed this element at Chorney High School for Girls. The first thing we did is we looked at our vision and our vision now is to develop influential women of the future. And this is a moral purpose and is at the core of absolutely everything that we do in the school. Student voice. We rebranded and extended our student council and we now call it Chorney Voice. Instead of just two reps per year group, we extended to six and we are inclusive so that all students are represented. So for example, rather than having all the really high flying, fantastic students, we actually have some of the more challenged students who sit on this forum. Student leadership. This is absolutely key to everything that we do and we want students to have ownership of what they do in our community. This has been a key contributory factor to our success and establishing the sense of community inside and outside of our school. You'll hear more about our student leadership in another session from one of my colleagues. Other things that we did were that we actually embedded and introduced a house system in school. Given our vision of developing influential women, it was apt that we actually named the houses after influential women, which has been hugely successful. It underpins a sense of belonging and pride in our school, and house assemblies are a really great way of bringing our school community together, but also to bring our local community to us. Social action. At this school, we pride ourselves on our social action, and you'll probably have seen, hopefully through Twitter and through media, um, despite our school being one of the most deprived areas in Luton, we are really renowned for our social action. And this is something I truly believe has been influential with our students and within our community. And it's how we've actually developed this sense of community in our school. Community events. Representation at community events is also instrumental in making your school part of your community. When you make the effort to go to these community events, it is recognised and it is very much appreciated. Alumni, this is the most powerful tool in any school, and I want to talk about that in a little bit more detail shortly. So let me just dig into the social action activities that take place here. Not only does this encompass community spirit and cohesion, but we all know it plays a significant role in the personal development, confidence and resilience of our students. This facet of school life is invaluable for our students and for our school. When our students engage in social action, there's a bit of a double benefit. Students benefit themselves through the knowledge, skills and real life experiences they gain. And this obviously has a huge impact on their character and sense of well-being, employability and even academic results. Some of the examples that we do here at Chorney Girls, we have an annual race for life. We have a good causes week. 
we have house charities and we have first give enrolment for all year eight students on an annual basis. This is just a snapshot. So five years ago, we started taking part in our very own school race for life. We used to take a group of students to the local Luton race, which was fantastic, but we found that out of 1,050 students, we may get sort of 15 that wanted to participate. So I guess this is where, as a school, we had a bit of a light bulb moment. So we started our very own Race for Life and we raised money solely for cancer research. We then expanded this because we developed a really strong link with an ambassador for the Luton and Dunstable Hospital charity. So we then decided to split our Race for Life funds for cancer research and our local breast cancer units. We've developed really strong links with the hospital and five years on, we continue to raise the bar with our figures. This year, um, um, 2019, 2020, we actually raised a total of £12,570 on the day alone. And this was social action by our students. So given that they're from the most deprived area in Luton, we are really, really proud of this. And it started off around the 6,000 mark and this is where we're currently at. Obviously our community have not only gained from us, but we have gained from them as we are always invited to local hospital events, as to go on radios, feature on their social media, feature on their adverts, for example. And actually a very reputable, reputable breast surgeon even arranged for 10 of our girls to do a block of work experience with surgeons when they finished their GCSEs last summer. This was wholly instigated by them as a result of the work that we had actually put in to help our local charities. So good calls this week and first give, just going to sort of give you a bit of an, uh, an insight into these. So every February we have what we call good calls this week. It lasts for a full week and it is one of the best weeks that we ever have in school um, alongside our Race for Life Day. Each house chooses a charity and they vote. So we have an element of student democracy as well. We formed really strong links with the charities, invited them to our assemblies, visited the charities when it was safe to do so. And we've had some of them actually come in and see the social action that the girls take part in. This year was the first year that we actually had four charities and we chose to split the funds among all four equally. So again, in that week, we raised a staggering £6,340. First give, um, I am aware that some schools are very familiar with this. Um, it's a fantastic programme and it really, really does develop self-confidence and the idea of student leadership. So we do this through our PSHE programme. And again, we work with our local charities and it's a really excellent way of forming relationships and bringing the community into your school. One thing I would say that is really important is to get your school involved with local causes. So, for example, most recently um, and last year, we got involved with the local food bank because we knew that there was a shortage of food around Christmas time. Simple things that can be done. We held a non-uniform day. We, we sort of raised awareness with our students as to what they were doing and what they needed to do. And actually, rather than paying for non-uniform day, the students had to bring in food as an example of contributing to their community. So on that day, we actually collected over 10,000 items from students and staff. So simple wins and obviously our community benefit hugely from this. Our alumni is a real strength here at Chorney Girls. So this is something that we established about four years ago. We currently have over 1900 members on our platform and this really makes our school part of our community. The eldest member actually left Chorney Girls in 1966. So how this operates is we have termly newsletters. So we send our Chorney Chronicle to all our members. We quite often get emails back and we send regular emails about the school to our members. We invite them back as sort of keynote speakers to talk about careers, journeys, and actually to even mentor our students. Um, we seek out their expertise if we can. So speakers at different school events like our awards evenings, and we've had some really fantastic speakers through our own alumni. Um, also sponsorship opportunities. And we've had invitations to really prestigious events such as the Baton Awards. I would highly recommend if you don't already have an alumni, it's one of the best ways to engage and and really secure this sense of community inside and outside of the school. I briefly mentioned representation at community events, but this really is so valuable and so important because it shows your school's willingness to support their community and vice versa. It puts your school on the map, it brings a community to, to you, and again, if willing, the favour will be returned. 
If you think about the diversity of your school and celebrate where you can with not only students, but with their families and our community, that is also imperative to bring in this sense of community together. Some things that we've had school representation include the community IFTAL celebrations, community fundraising events, the Love Luton Awards and any educational conferences that take place within our local region. So I'd like to finish by just sort of, um, I guess, giving you some top tips, if I may. So a few things that I would highly recommend is make connections in your local community. Businesses are keen to engage with schools and they often have much to contribute, whether it be careers encounters or mentoring for students, work experience, mock interviews, all of those things contribute to the sense of community that we have. Utilise your social media, it's the most powerful resource you have. So follow your local businesses and charities so they can see everything your school does. We have had huge amount of engagement from this alone. So for example, the Race for Life, when we did a local radio station interview with Council Research and we were all over the local press with this one. Your local community wants to be a part of your school community, so invite your parents to school events frequently when it is safe to do so in the current climate. This creates such a strong sense of community when you do. I'd just like to finish by thanking people for watching this session. I hope you've managed to take away a few nuggets that you can um, deploy in your own setting. Um, but like I say, part of our journey here at Chorney from requires improvement to outstanding really has encompassed this sense of community both within and beyond the school gates. So I wish you all well on your journey. Thank you once again and have a good evening.